today. From U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, this is the National Football League. side by Minnesota standards but then again it is still summer either way the AC is working just fine at U.S. Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities Brandon Gaud and Charles Davis on hand kickoff just moments away Charles quickly keys to the game for me it's coaching who prepared his team the best going into this one to give them the confidence to believe that they would win the game that's who's going to come out of this one on top strapped in it's just about time to get the party started and we are underway from downtown Minneapolis and it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29 well, the 49ers getting ready to go on offense and it's the pro bowler Brock Purdy at the helm in his third NFL season now out of Iowa State and the great story of Brock Purdy continues had he been drafted in the first round, I think people would be singing his praises to the skies, but for whatever reason, people can't let go of the fact he's Mr. Irrelevant, and they don't give him the credit he deserves. He is not just a system quarterback. He's a guy who enhances his team. Not just along for the ride, he's the one steering the ship, and without him, their ceiling significantly drops. First carry for Christian McCaffrey. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Right away, they rack up 10 yards on their first play from scrimmage. Anytime a team goes on the road, there's always that little bit of fear that maybe they can be affected by the hometown crowd. But this is where game planning really came into play. They talked about it all week. Go in there, establish yourselves. Well, that run right there, that slows down the crowd and gives them a lot of confidence. And they run the option here on first and 10. It'll be a pickup of five on the keeper. It's second down. Oh, man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option. Quarterback kept it. And while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. From the 44-yard line, here's a second and five. Back to throw, Purdy. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there was no way that ball was going to be caught. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Now Purdy. And he is caught. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10. Down at the 31. Purdy looking to throw. 
And that one too wide and incomplete. Well, they've been back on the heels a little bit here in this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops and escape this drive. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. Up the gut, McCaffrey. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They need to make up some ground, and they did. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Shotgun now with Purdy. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And this will not get close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the 26. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game, but it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. you got to go up and make the tackle right away. So Purdy off and Moody on for the 49er field goal. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. And his kick is right there. It's good. And the 49ers take a 3-0 lead. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. Yeah, but bottom line, they wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. The 49ers ready to kick it away, and here we go. Kene Nwagu now out of his end zone. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. So here are the Vikings to go on offense for the first time, and it's a rookie at the helm, the 10th overall pick back in April out of Michigan, J.J. McCarthy. And during the entire pre-draft runoff, when people talked about J.J. McCarthy, you heard three words mentioned over and over again. Accurate, efficient, winner. 27-1 as a starting quarterback at Michigan and won a national title in his final season. But there's more to him than just that. This is a supreme athlete, a supreme competitor with a bigger arm than people understand. I expect him to be very successful as a starting quarterback. McCarthy to throw on first and 10. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. And his play caller does a nice job of giving him an easy throw to start this drive, and he takes advantage of it. The completion sets up a manageable second down. From the 35, here's second and two. On play action, McCarthy. Out of the backfield, this is Aaron Jones. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. To the air with McCarthy. Got a man, that's Trent Sherfield. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and a yard. Now McCarthy. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. 
he did a fine job there of not hitting it before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to convert, albeit not by much, on third and a yard. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. On play action, now McCarthy. That's down the field for Jefferson. And this is taken in at the five. And he'll be touched down in the end, but a big play on that one. It's early, but a now to cliche alert here. Big players make big plays. Should I say in big games, too? Ah, oh, what the heck. And this defense, they're going to have to find some way to slow him down as this game goes on, because when this combination is going good, they can tear your secondary apart. Trying the power game with Ham. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. And that's the defense that they were looking for, being able to get extra bodies to the point of attack to deal with the big guy carrying the ball. You really don't want to be in a position where it's a one-on-one -on -one tackle with him. From the two now, second and goal. Once more, it's the fullback Ham. And he will take this one into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. C.J. Ham taking it in from two yards out. And the Vikings have answered that early field goal to take a first quarter lead. Well, if at first you don't succeed, try again. They go to the big man, second time he gets it done. Almost as if they were feeling like he was establishing a rhythm. Give it to him again and again, and how about the end result? Finishes it off in the end zone. Touchdown, great run, and the score. Now they'll line up to kick the extra point. He's got it, they'll see that opening drive field goal and raise it a touchdown, and that makes it seven to three. So that drive in total eight plays, and it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Here's Christian McCaffrey to return it. And he's going to be taken down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. After one, 7-3 the score on EA Sports. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter as they get set to start their drive with a first and ten. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. And at least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. A second down throw for Purdy. And looking for Kittle, but it's intercepted. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown.
An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The 49ers offense making its way back out there. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. And they'll go on the... No, oh, bottled up, fumble. It's out, it's loose. And the Vikings pick up the football. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. Obviously, you got to hold on to the football, but I've got to give credit to the defense there. Good job of knocking it free. Yeah, because a lot of the time, we just blame the offensive players for not taking care of it. How about the effort of the defensive players knowing that guys are going to, and if they're good, anticipate the contact coming and try and cover up the football. And they still find ways to knock it free. Now the man from UTEP, this is Aaron Jones. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Throwing on second down, McCarthy. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. you got to cash in and get some points. Well, good field position to start the drive, but under the gun now here on third and eight. McCarthy, he'll set to throw it. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. Well, they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. It's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You're just going to pick up a holding call. So following the holding call, what can they do here on third and long? Here's McCarthy. And yeah, that will be incomplete. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. 
Now the Vikings will send out the special teams crew here for a field goal try. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. And this one looks good, it is good. Right down the pipe, and they will stretch the lead now to 17-3. So they get the turnover in plus territory. The drive stalls out, but still able to get three out of that. Yeah, we were able to see an offense and a defense kind of mix and match with each other, didn't we? Both of them trying to make sure that they have the upper hand and the advantage. Offense trying to get to the end zone. Defense, of course, trying to hold them to a field goal attempt. And it wasn't a guaranteed lock three from where they started. So, you know, the offense has to be happy to come away with those three points. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The 49ers offense now. They work their way back onto the field. They are looking to make a bit of a 180. They are sputtering right now. And frankly, I think it's time to call your playmakers together and say, all right, guys, we're going to lean on you through this patch. We need you to get us back on track and get us going in the right direction. So you're calling plays geared to them. Not necessarily when you look at your plays, oh, this hurts the defense. I want the ball in the hands of X, Y, and Z and see if we can move forward. So don't get too cute. Go to the playmakers. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. They go play action here, Purdy. A fight for it, and this is caught. What a catch. Another big play here as they strike for 31. And there's not a quarterback in the league that will ever complain about having small receivers like a Tyreek Hill or a Cooper Cup who can find a seam, have good vision, and get open. But when you're throwing downfield like this, you want a big, tall receiver who can go above the rim, or if you're a volleyball fan, above the net and get it. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. And he's going to use his legs here. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. Stephon Gilmore, he was the one defensively there who really blew that play up before it got started. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. A first carry for Elijah Mitchell. Just a yard there, so it brings up a tough third and 12. We call a lot of games, but we don't normally talk about inside linebackers being that fleet of foot, do we? No, he was able to get outside there to make that play. Yeah, and you know what makes them faster? Their ability to read plays, understand what offenses are trying to do, and put themselves in proper position. They need 12 here. It's third down. Here's Purdy. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 18. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Oh. 
So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Purdy will set up to throw it here. That's over the middle and caught by Ayuk. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. So just three yards on the completion there. And it'll be second down. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. And he is caught at the seven-yard line. And the 49ers are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. It's all pretty simple sometimes, isn't it? Go where the defenders are not, and he does exactly that. Makes a nice catch to move the chains. Defense, got to find a better way of accounting for the shorter routes that are being run against them. McCaffrey is in. Touchdown, 49ers. Boy, we talk a lot about Christian McCaffrey and what he can do in the open field, and it's easy to gloss over how tough he can be to stop near the goal line. And he shows you just how tough he is on that carry as he takes it into the end zone. Jake Moody now for the point after. And it's up through the goalposts. It's 17-10. So that drive goes eight plays. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. Nwangu now from his end zone. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. Still more than a minute to go, so you know, there is time if they want to mount something here. Not only time but they have three timeouts at their disposal as well. So that changes everything that you're doing here. Without those timeouts, you can only work the sidelines, hoping to get out of bounds. Here, the middle of the field is still available because you can call timeout and regroup. Now McCarthy throwing on first down. He's got this one complete to Sherfield. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Defensively, they just lost him. He was waving his arms saying, I'm wide open. They found him. Yeah, and it's so interesting about when a receiver starts to wave his arms because some guys right off the line of scrimmage, they declare themselves open. You know those guys throw the one arm up, right. hit me right now. In this case, he was so wide open that he was frantically trying to get his attention to make sure he got the football. And then I'm sure his only thought when the ball was in the air, don't drop it. Had too much time to think. McCarthy now on first down. Finds his man. There's Jordan Addison. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Second down and four. Looking to throw McCarthy. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. 
Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time, separation, that's what's gonna make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Throwing is McCarthy. And down he goes. The 49ers get there. And Nick Bosa is so quick on the outside, he gets in there to bring him down. And Nick Bosa does it again. Clearly one of the most consistently disrupted defenders in the NFL. Recorded double-digit sacks in each of the last three seasons. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. Back to return it, Christian McCaffrey. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So that'll be marked down as a 19-yard punt. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. is to snap this once and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we've reached halftime here in Minnesota with the Vikings on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has been a hard-hitting affair to this point. And you gotta expect we'll see more of the same in the second half. And to bring the action your way, let's get it right back out to Brandon God. Okay, coach. Yeah, adjustments likely gonna play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. Touchdown is the difference, 17-10 our score, and we are back underway on EA Sports. That's going to be taken at the goal line, and he'll return it. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Now the Vikings offense set to go to work to begin this third quarter. Hey, Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. There go play action. Here's McCarthy. The left side completion to Jones. And he is going to lose yardage here. He was unable to shake free there, and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. They'll try the right side with Jones. Four yards on the pickup there, and now they're left with a third and eight. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Here now a third down and eight. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. 
operating from the gun. McCarthy. And the Niners get there and bring him down. Javon Hargrave, the D tackle, getting the sack. That's be exactly what they were looking for coming out to start the third quarter. Get a sack, get off the field, get the momentum going in their direction. Get the ball back to your offense, right? Get that momentum because, hey, this lead is very, very slim. And here's Ryan right now as he'll kick it away for the second time. It's a 40-yard punt, six yards on the return, and the Niners will go on offense first and ten. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Now yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. And they'll begin by running the option. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. Six yards there on the keeper. It's second down. Now that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained. And in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. He's going to keep this again. Wiggles free. Now the ball comes loose. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately had an alert teammate who was able to get it. In motion right, Debo. And he'll get an opportunity with it on the touch pass. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. That's a nice job there defensively being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on it before he could get much out of it. From the 41, here's a second and eight. McCaffrey running up the middle. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. Here's third and three. Purdy now to throw. This ball is caught. He's got Debo. And he is going to have a 49ers first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. On first down, this is McCaffrey to the 27-yard line. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And they'll come up on a second and seven from the 27. Now he'll try to run with this. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. 
Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half. And that trend is continuing here. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Throwing here, Purdy. Throw left side, McCaffrey's got it. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. So Purdy off and Moody on for the 49er field goal. He hit his first, this one from 40 yards out. And this one is right through. And that will cut this lead back down to four now. It's 17-13. So the three points there in CD, that helps him inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And able to get this out to the 25. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. A run there on first down gets three up to the 28. gonna do it for this third quarter of action this is the National Football League on EA Sports and we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis it's the Vikings in possession of the football and the lead they'll be looking to add to that total as we begin quarter number four here's second and seven Back to throw. McCarthy. Got a man over the middle, and it's complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That throw right on the money from the quarterback from Michigan. It's a first down. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. down carry by Jones and he is going to lose yardage here officially it's a one yard loss that's going to bring up second and 11. That's a play to take note of there for the defense I think in the future if you're going to try and block him maybe you get a guard to help double team him and try and steer him out of the play they should have done it on that snap Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. 
operating from the gun. McCarthy. And down he goes. The 49ers get there. Leonard Floyd, the old Georgia Bulldog, finding his way into the backfield. And he may have surprised people the last few years, but it shouldn't be a surprise anymore when he gets to the quarterback. These last four seasons, 39 and a half sacks during that span, and the 49ers expect that kind of production throughout the season. The Vikings on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 14. Complete to Jones. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers, 39. Able to convert on third and 14, a terrific play call. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 39-yard line. And inside give to Jones. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. So they cite the right guard this time with a holding penalty. And so many different assignments you could have at that position, and sometimes you might just be a step too late and have to grab and hold on. Operating from the gun, McCarthy. He gets it to Addison. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll bring up second down. But right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. On second down, it's McCarthy. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. This a big play for both sides. What will we see here? Third and four. <laughs> to the air again, McCarthy. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Up the middle, Jones. We've got a one score game with inside of two minutes remaining. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. They'll go again to Jones. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. three operating from the gun McCarthy and that is incomplete so decision time now because a field goal keeps it a one score game what are you thinking well I'm looking at the down and distance and that's where the issue comes in it's not short enough that it's a no brainer and you go for it you have to analyze this one to me you take the field goal take the points 
I don't think you want to risk coming away with nothing. They'll run it with Jones. And this doesn't end well at all as they stop him far behind the line to gain. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. So that's a decision that could loom pretty large here. They go for it on fourth down, but come up empty. But I actually like the call. And the reason? It shows me a head coach has faith in his team overall. First on the offensive side, thinking they can pick it up, but also knowing that he has faith in his defense that if they don't, they'll go out there and stop them. I like the confidence he showed. They'll come up first and 10 here. Throwing, Purdy. That's to McCaffrey, complete. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Plenty of time and two timeouts still at their disposal. First and ten here. Purdy's throw taken in by Samuel. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Obviously a big first down right there. Yeah, they still got a hustle. They got to get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. But I don't think necessarily you need to spike it. But they've got to continue to move quickly. Here's first down. Here's Purdy to throw. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Second down, eight yards to go. Purdy to throw. will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long way, way out there, but it'll be third down. That would have been a tough catch, but in this two-minute drill, those are the ones you really hope your guys come up with. Yeah, you don't want your guy to be able to take the out because it was a tough catch. You needed him to come up with that one because if he does, it alters the perspective of this two-minute drill, doesn't it? Purdy to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 34-yard line. So apparently some grabbing of the jersey there on the O-line. Yeah, just look in the interior, and that's where the penalty occurred. This crowd turning up the decibel level. It's third and long. Here's Purdy. And this nearly intercepted. Probably should have been. Had he caught it, it would have sealed it. Instead, one more chance coming up on fourth down. Partner, they've got one chance left to keep this one going. And I think for you and me, Let's think along with their offensive coordinator now. Has to think back, cycle through every play of this contest and remember what's worked and what has it. Because right here, he needs the best play of the game in order to keep this one alive. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert and they turn it over. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. 
Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. Victory formation time for the Vikings as they'll take a knee here. And now the Niners going to signal for their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? <laughs> and the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. Charles, in these lower scoring games, you know it better than anybody. Uh, points are at such a premium, but taking care of the football is king. They play turnover free from whistle to whistle, and they come through with a victory. Yeah, and that's what won them the game because even doing it that way, being that clean partner, they weren't able to really run away with this game. So that tells us just how important it was to make sure you played mistake free football. That led to the victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Vikings as we say so long from Minneapolis.